Shabbat Shalom. A long time ago, back in the days of the Maccabees, there lived in the land of Israel a very wise man named Honi, the circle maker. Honi was famous in those days because Honi knew prayers that no one else knew. But despite being so wise, Honi was also extraordinarily impatient and surprisingly selfish. One time, when it was the time of the rainy season, no rain fell. The ground was too hard for planting. The crops began to dry out. All of the people began to worry, just like that. So they went to Honey the Circle Maker and said, please, Mr. Circle Maker, talk to God. Ask God to make it rain. Why, said Honey the Circle Maker. The people answered, if there is no rain, how will we grow our food? Ah, said Honey, I have plenty of food in my cabinet. Honey, they shouted, for once, think about someone else. Fine. So Honey the Circle Maker took a big piece of chalk and drew a big circle on the ground. And Honey stood in the middle of the circle and Honey shouted, God, I will not move from this circle until you make it rain. And nothing happened. So Honey said, God, maybe you didn't hear me. It is me, Honey, the circle maker. These people need rain, a rain of blessing to soften the earth and bring food to the hungry. I know you are just and compassionate, and I am not moving from this circle until you make it rain. Well, then there was thunder and lightning, and rain fell from the skies in a tremendous downpour, and all the people cheered, hooray for Honey, the circle maker. And they all ran off to tend to their crops and to plant their vegetables. And Honey said, ah, I'm soaking wet. And a big prayer like that, it makes me hungry. And he set off down the road looking for something to eat. And Honey came upon an elderly woman who was planting a tree. Excuse me, he said. What kind of tree are you planting? It is a carob tree, she said. Now, a question for all of you. Do you know what, what carob is? Yeah, people say it's supposed to taste like chocolate. It doesn't. <laughs> but if you're staying for the family dinner tonight, you can try some and you can see for yourself. But they didn't have any chocolate in ancient Israel. You know, if this were an ancient Aztec story or an ancient Mayan story, maybe there would be chocolate in it. But it's a Jewish story, so you get carob. Anyway, Honey said to the gardener, Carob, huh? How long will it take this tree to bear fruit? Well, she said, it will take 70 years. 70 years, cried Honey. I mean, not to be rude or anything, but you're not exactly a youngster. Are you certain you will live another 70 years to eat the fruit of this tree? Well, perhaps not, said the woman. However, when I was born into this world, I found many beautiful carob trees. They were planted by those who came before me. And just as my ancestors planted trees for me, I am planting trees for my children and grandchildren, so they will have carob to eat. Seventy years, Honey thought. Just the thought of it makes me sleepy. And Honey lay down on the ground next to the carob tree, and Honey fell fast asleep into a deep, deep sleep. In fact, Honey slept so long, Honey slept for 70 years. And when Honey awoke, he had grown a long beard, and Honey looked up and he saw an elderly woman gathering fruit from the carob tree. Honey asked her, are you the same woman who planted this tree? No, she replied. That was my grandmother. And Honey said, wow, I must have been asleep for 70 years. That is 
some schluff. Here, said the woman, have some carob. And for the rest of his days, Honey the circle maker helped to plant carob trees so all the children and grandchildren would have plenty to eat. And if you go to the north of Israel, you can still see the descendants of those carob trees today. And parents and grandparents told this story to their children and grandchildren. And now I'm telling this story to you. So you can tell this story to your children and to your grandchildren and remind them of what Honey learned, that the way that we show we are thankful to those who came before us is to make things better for those who will come after us. And there's a bunch of people here tonight who know exactly what I'm talking about. And I want to invite those people onto the bima for a blessing. So all of you who are here tonight, who grew up right here at Temple Emmanuel, and you yourself attended religious school or attended our nursery school, and now you have children or grandchildren in our religious school or nursery school. I want you to come on up here onto the bima and inspire us all by your example. Come on up and Shabbat Shalom.